But it's been good to be a part of this church and just how welcoming everybody's been to us and we've really appreciated that, appreciated your love and support and we're happy to be here, we're happy to be a part of this church, we're happy to be a part of this community and we mean that, we really do mean that. It's not just something to say, I, if you know me well and if you would ask my wife, I, 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 I can't really say something I, I don't mean like that. There's, there's times that, you know, even... With mom, I ask a question. Well, what, what did you like? That was that good. I, and I'm quiet. <laughs> no, we are. We are very happy to be here. It's been a blessing. And today, I just today it was a wonderful day in the house of God. Just the, this morning, the, the 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 congregational singing, the special music we had was beautiful. A wonderful message from our pastor. And then tonight, hearing these kids lift up their voices and their hands to God and to praise Him. He is worthy of our praise. He is the Lamb. And then uh, Brother Sam, as he uh, sings, you know the wonderful thing that we have God continuing to walk with us and direct with us and, and be with us. And, and what a blessing that is. And, and I would say tonight as we look at this message, in, in part, it, it, you can see that in this, if, as a people, if we choose to walk with the Lord, and the text tonight that we're going to be looking at is in First Kings chapter 22. We're only going to read a few verses in succession here. We're not going to go through the entire chapter. It would take way too long. There's probably, if you were to break this chapter up, you could have many, many messages in it. And there are many ways you could take this. And, and tonight, my title for this is Unpossessed Possessions. And we're just going to look at some things here, and I hope to just take a few thoughts that might uh, help us to really consider, one, our our walk with God and and how near to God we need to be in order to truly obtain the things that He has planned for the children of God, the people of God. There's a lot of effort, even in the time that we live in, to lay claim to things that God has given and promised, but we want God to be out of the picture. And it doesn't work. It, it, we're not going to be successful in our Christian life if we endeavor to walk without God and expect blessing, expect uh, peace, and even to have the joy that we uh, heard so much about over the last few weeks. And, and that is definitely evidence of uh, being Spirit-filled, we very clear in Galatians 5, it's been taught that it's a fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to look at some people that did desire things that God had given and promised, but they didn't want God at all. And it, it, hopefully it will remind us, especially tonight as we gather and we gather around the Lord's table, and what we do is in remembrance of Him, and as we take the bread as we take the cup, knowing that our eternal salvation is 100% dependent on what Jesus Christ did. It, it, there, is, there is no other way to heaven. There is no other path to God but through Jesus Christ. And it, it is good for us to remember these things. So we'll read uh, the text and Uh, If you're able and you would, we'll read the first three verses. If you could stand, we'll read these three verses. We'll pray and we'll get into uh, this message, lesson, however you want to look at it, dissect it here this evening. So 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 1 through 3, and it says, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours? And we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you, we are truly thankful for Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the precious blood that was shed on Calvary. Lord, I ask that tonight you please help me. Lord, that you help me say the things that are going to honor you and truly reflect, Lord, the truth of you. And Lord, I I do not want to misrepresent you in any way. Lord, please help us to learn from your word and to go forward tonight 
as Christians with a, a, a more sweet uh, a desire to follow you, a resolve to continue uh, to in the path of righteousness that you have laid out for us. Lord, we ask tonight that you would help those that aren't here, those that are still sick, those uh, that are just not able, Lord, that you would minister to them, encourage them tonight. Please meet with us. And we pray these things in Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. You all may be seated. So here, we're going to, for time's sake, we do need to get going, and I often can labor an introduction, so I'm going to skip the introduction. So that'll take out a good chunk of time for us here and, and enable us to get right into the heart of the message. And, and so it's just a, a few quick thoughts that I do want to go through. And, and the first part being found clearly in verse 3, and I'll read it again. It says, And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it out of the hand of the king of Syria. And the first thought is, uh, just a play on words, just like the, the title, unpossessed possessions, and there are things that people have, but they, they really don't have. Uh, uh, there, I read an article one time of all the, the wealth that is even in the United States that is there, and they are in the names of people, but they haven't laid claim to them. They haven't taken them. And, and I, would, I would propose tonight as we look at three aspects, and we could look at three things. We could look at the lost, we could look at the save and the backslidden. And there are things that are God has made available, and there are things that people are that even the lost are trying to get. That there is a sense that yeah, it could be theirs, but they're laying claim to it wrongly. And then there are Christians that God has given us wonderful things. I don't know have you ever, have seen this book? It's a little book. Mine is red, and it's the Promise Book from God, and it has all His promises through Scripture for Christians. And it is a book that is, is great to look through and remember, because I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I get feeling a little low, right? A little discouraged. Uh, you might even say, okay, he's a little depressed, however it might be. Uh, you can get low even in our Christian life, and then you start to forget about the things that God has promised His people. Right? That uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 and 10, that his strength is made perfect in weakness. In times of even physical suffering or spiritual suffering, that God's strength, his grace is sufficient. And through his strength, we, we can be strong. There are problems that uh, there are times that we think, I, I don't know how I'm going to make things work. I, I don't know how I'm going to do this or that. And, and, my God shall supply all your need, right? Not wants, but our needs. And I know we're to be good stewards. We're supposed to uh, be responsible with the things that we have. And I, I, you know, Rachel and I talked about it. When we were younger, we weren't totally responsible always with the things that we had. Uh, I came home, we, were just, we hadn't been married long. And, and we got our first credit card. And we had at least one child at the time. And we got our first credit card, and I, I, I made the mistake going to a, a hunting, fishing, camping store. And it was like Christmas on that credit card. And I, it was like, man, this is cheap. Everything's on sale, and I put it on the card. I didn't have cash on my book. But wow, I come home with all this stuff, and my wife's like, what in the world? I wasn't being a very good steward. I wasn't being very responsible. But you know, somehow the Lord still helped me in my stupidity and ignorance. And I, I wouldn't, I'm not advocating you do that, young people. I'm just saying God is long suffering, He is merciful, and He He truly is good and can continue to help us. He has promises for us. There have been things that we we have been I it was a blessing to talk to the lady that God helped her and she took her last chemo treatment, and I, I was speaking to her a little bit of my sister that had gone through similar things and just rejoicing how God, through that trial and through that time, saw them through it and cared for it. Look, we have promises of God. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Things that we need to remember. I would say this in this thought of what is ours, yet is not ours. Every Christian, every Christian has ground that is rightfully theirs once they have received Christ. 
And one of it is we sing so often about is, I have a home in glory. I do. I have a place. I have, the Lord promised me a mansion. And I, if you're one that believes this, I'm going to be delicate and kind. There, there are some that advocate that, well, in order for God to do that, it's actually, you know, He shrinks us and we're about this tall, an inch tall, and that's the way we all can have a mansion and stuff. I'm like, seriously? The God that created a universe that has no end and totally is continuing to expand, you don't think he can build a mansion to fit every Christian, every believer in a mansion? I don't know about you, a mansion is something that's big. And my God is big and can do great things. And, and it's something that he, is, he has given me and promised. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If, and he says, I go to prepare a place for you. These are truths, these are things that I have, but I have not literally, physically possessed yet, but one day I will. And I look forward to that. I look forward to what God has for me. I am thankful that when I got saved, I became a new creature. And I, as I walk with God, there, there are things that as I grow in my faith that, uh, and that God has done and provided, there are uh, gifts that God has um, endowed us with spiritually. There are things that are ours that, you know what, we need to be using for Him. There are things that He's given us in this time, in this life, in this world that He's gifted and endowed the believer with that need to be used for Him and for His glory. And there are just, I like to say, just rich blessings. That song, Count Your Many Blessings, See What God Hath Done, right? To name them one by one. Daily He loadeth us with benefits, truths in the Word of God, But all this is only through Jesus Christ. You know, the thing that we need to remember is you have Ahab here, and this is where he was right, yet he was wrong. He said, is it not ours? Did he not? Well, technically it was. Technically it was his. He was of the seed of Abraham, was he not? Did not the Lord give that land and beyond that land, clear up to the Euphrates, the wilderness. Brother James taught in Sunday school, and he's going in James chapter 1, I believe verse 5, it's speaking of the vastness of the inheritance that God has given to the children of Israel. And it's saying everywhere your foot walks is yours. And that's what he promised Abraham. And so here's the descendants, the seed, and Ramoth Gilead truly was theirs. It would have been given to them. They had lost it through disobedience. In type, you could see that, and and, and you start to get a little bit, we got to be, I need latitude sometimes. Do you ever need latitude, Pastor Mitchell? Just just to make a point. I mean, I in no way am I advocating that Ahab was anything more than a devilish scandal that he was. But he was of the house of Israel, okay? Okay. And Israel, it tells us in Scripture, they backslid. And in their backsliding, they lost so much that was theirs, and rightfully theirs. But because of their actions and the behavior, and beside, uh, their desire to turn to other gods and trust in other things, they lost what was rightfully theirs. But God said, this is an eternal covenant. So technically, it was theirs. But... He lost claim to it because of their spiritual condition and their spiritual state. A thing I would like you to think about today, and it's prevalent, sadly it's prevalent, and it's not an American issue, it's a worldwide issue. That there's this thought in thinking that heaven is just available for everybody, and it is. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's very clear in Peter. John 3.16 is undeniable. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is with God. That is in heaven. 
That is going to be the new heaven and the new earth that is yet to come. Revelation chapter 21 and 22. The Lord has made it and it is availed to all, but not all have possession or claim to that. Because it can only be had through Jesus Christ. But so much teaching today is, yes, you can have it. It's yours. Heaven is ours. But there is no Christ. So religion has erred in this, and that religion of Ahab had did the very same thing. He wanted to lay claim to a possession given to Israel that was God-given, but he did not want God. He used his own people. It's interesting, verse 6, in this chapter, chapter 22, verse 6. It says, And the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Were those truly the prophets of God? They're prophesying, apparently, in his name, but they were not the prophets of God. Everything that we know about Ahab, And his lovely wife. Right? Uh, Jezebel. Their, Their prophets were the prophets of Baal. They were ungodly people. They were evil. The things that they involved themselves, the form of worship, the type of worship, the things that they would even subject their children to, was horrific. Horrific. The rituals that people would go through in all these things. It was was unbelievable what they would do. And yet they're seeing this possession and they're desiring it. They're knowing it's a good thing. They're seeing it in the hands of the Syrians and they're convincing and saying, yes, let's go forward. Let's obtain this. And they're even saying, yeah, God said so. But he's nowhere near what they're doing. That's what's taking place across the world today. There's a message of God. There's a message of hope. There's a message of peace. But there's nothing about Jesus Christ and His righteousness and the death, burial, and resurrection. And the need for us to turn from our sins in order to obtain that heavenly home, that eternal possession that God does want us to have. That is the wonderful nature of God. You know, they they talk about today that Christians and those that believe this book and love God, that they're not inclusive. And the fact is that there could be nothing further from the truth. Uh, We Remember the hymn we sing? I'm sure we sing it in this church from time to time. He included me. Yes, He included me. When the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. That's why we're not Calvinists. Because then we'd have to say, yes, he excluded you. Right? Not me, but he, you know, because, you know, every Calvinist believes somehow miraculously they're in. Right? That, That goes without argument. It's just, you know, we're not so sure about you guys, but they're pretty confident in themselves. Anyways, we digressed a little bit. It is interesting, even in verse 7 as it continues. Uh, Josephat asked the question, and and this is a question that we as Christians should be asking today, especially in the times that we're in. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there here not a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Remember, these are all speaking in the name of God, supposedly. And, And Josephat, if we were to look at a type of a Christian... You know, again, taking some latitude in the Word of God, we'd say, yes, this is Him, and He's doing the right thing. He's exercising some discernment. He's seeing what the character and the quality of these prophets are. He's looking at Ahab and saying, he's kind of shady, and I definitely don't like his wife Jezebel. And he's saying, we, don't we have anybody that's going to speak truly, truly, honestly, openly on behalf of God? We ought to be asking that. We ought to be concerned about that. Because 
there is this narrowness in the fact that the only way to God is through Jesus Christ and His way. And we need to be looking for that. And we need to be sure our children and our teens know this. Because there's a lot of prophets out there preaching a message, apparently in the name of the Lord. Speaking of a possession that, yeah, God does want them to have. But they're omitting the proper way to obtain it. And they're teaching that you can do it in the path of sin that you're in and somehow think you're going to obtain it and it is impossible. It is impossible. We should understand it's completely impossible to possess something spiritual or that can only be granted by God and reject Him. You can't. It is interesting. We have the United Nations, many of you are familiar with, and their headquarters is in New York City. And I think you would be hard-pressed to argue that there's any form of godliness at all in that body, that organization. You'd be hard-pressed to argue that there's any semblance of wanting to do what God wants in their lives and do any form of righteousness. Yet there is a message there of peace. There is a message of hope. It is interesting to me and many of uh, our men and women here that have come up through that early Cold War era, especially in the 50s, that in 1959, of all the nations in the world, Russia, Russia paid and implemented a bronze statue for the United Nations. And on this it had this man beating a sword into plowshares. And the thought in that is, yes, that we can have and accomplish world peace as a group of nations doing it our way. There there have been more wars, more conflict, more disease, more death that has taken place since the founding of the United Nations than than centuries prior to that. And, And that's just the truth. You can't accomplish it without God. That day is coming. We will. Christian, if you're born again, if you're saved, one day we are going to see the fulfillment of that dream of the swords being beat into plowshares. But it is going to come and it's going to happen according as it says in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, and He shall judge among the nations. He, that's Jesus Christ, is King of kings and Lord of lords. And shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. What, what a day that will be. And that day is coming. And that is a day of hope. That is a day of joy. That is a day to look forward to, but it will only be accomplished with Jesus Christ. And it's going to be done His way. And He will be the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He will be the righteous judge. I also, as we go through this in just a few more minutes here, another thought in this is that we will never obtain what is ours. What God has given the believer. What God wants us to have. And I'm not a prosperity preacher in any way. I'm not. I've been kind of accused of that in some Baptist circles. But truly, I'm not. But I I do think that sometimes in in some Baptist circles, we can get a little bit too negative with our Christian faith and walk. You know, and it's like we want to take some other religions that, you know, want to crawl on glass and want to do flagellation and all these other things. Come on, we don't need to do that. We're going to go through enough as it is. Christ suffered for us. He he said it is finished. He did. Now we know there will be trials of our faith. There will be tribulations or things. But we don't need to add to to those things in our life. And we as believers can have joy in serving the Lord. And I I appreciated that this morning. I I will say in, in a lot of 
Uh, uh, Baptist churches, you rarely will hear what you heard this morning of preaching that even speaks of through some tribulation and sufferings that joy comes and that we can have joy through it and that we can still have some smile. We can have some things uh, uh, that come from God in this. And I, I appreciated that. It was good. It was good. But we'll never obtain what is ours through compromise or unholy alliances. In chapter 22, verse 4, quickly it says, And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Joseph said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art. My people as thy people. My horses as thy horses. Christian, if we could learn anything from the Word of God and learn from a passage of Scripture, that there, there is nothing to be gained through compromise. Look, if there's, if there's institutions and there's inter-religions out there just because they're speaking of God, but if it's not Jesus Christ, if it is not the true Gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection, we have no business yoking up with them. We have no business saying, hey, my church is your church. I, I'm with you. And I understand, you know, we're not, we, we, we're in a time where we're saying, well, we, we can't keep being divided. Well, Romans chapter 6 makes it very clear. Mark them that cause divisions. Well, those that cause divisions are ones that are, are, are denying the truth of Jesus Christ. And we're to mark them. We can't go forward with them. There is nothing to be gained. There's nothing to be had. Nothing's ever been won through compromise. And there's been a lot of misrepresentation of a particular passage of Scripture in the Bible where God says, come now, let us reason together. They'll say, that's God saying, let's compromise. That's saying, hey, Okay, God's coming a little our way, and, and then we'll just go a little His way, and it works. That's, that's not true. God's saying, hey, settle down. Listen to the truth of what I have to say. Understand it, hear it. Let it get into your ears. Let it get into your heart and consider it and know the things that I have for you are truly for your benefit and happiness and your personal welfare. But it's my way. He's not saying, okay, well, yeah, that, that's all right. You know, those few, you know, there, there's a couple dozen, you know, somewhat good prophets of Baal in there. All 400 aren't well, but there's some that they mean well. You know, they have a good spirit. They have a good attitude. They have a good heart. And so, yeah, we, we can kind of go that direction. It's not going to work. I'll tell you that the, the church as a whole and Christians, we are not better by willing to compromise. We have lost too much. We, we, we have given up too much and we will never possess the things that God truly has for His people through compromise. Hey, he tells us in Scripture, how, how do you know you? By their fruit you shall know them. By your fruit. It, it is clear. It is, it is very evident in Scripture. It is something that is interesting is what they will try to do as... Ahab endeavored to do with Jehoshaphat. He tried to use him to gain what he wanted. And it is interesting, the, the nature and the deceptive nature. If you quickly, if you look at verse 30. In verse 30. And the king of Israel, this is Ahab, said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself. Well, that, that's already that. That ought to be a warning to us. I, I mean, our spiritual antenna ought to go up. I mean, there they are. They're going to go into battle. Get this. We're going to go into battle. We're going to go take an area that that the prophet of God said don't. And four hundred ungodly men, prophets of Baal, said, "Woohoo! We got it." And then Ahab saying, "Since we got this, I'm going to disguise myself, Jehoshaphat." And then look at this verse. Look how it continues. 
I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on my robes. I mean, does not the world trying to get us to do that today? Hey, Christian, you know, don't, the God stuff, that's too much. Hey, just, you know, be us for a bit. Be relevant. Be real. That's what Ahab was saying. You realize this fight, this battle was not even Jehoshaphat's? They, Syria at this time was not even an enemy of the people of Judah who Jehoshaphat was king of. I, he shouldn't have even, you read this whole thing, he goes down to there. They're setting up thrones. They're talking about all these things. My people are your people. My horse is your horse. It's not even his war. It's not even his battle. And then the king says, hey, of Israel, I'm going to disguise myself. You put on my stuff. We're going to the battle. They want to kill me. They want me dead. They hate me. So you put on my stuff. Does that sound reasonable? Does that sound sane? But I'm telling you, Kristen, when we get into compromise, we're doing the same thing. And we are setting ourselves up for defeat. We're setting ourselves up for a battle that we're going to come out not on top. See, Ahab did not believe in if the Lord be with us, who can be against us? You see in this passage of Scripture before this, when it talked about when Jehoshaphat asked for the prophet of God, a real prophet, Ahab answered and said, yeah, there's one, but I hate him. That ought to be evidence right there of some fruit of his heart. And we ought to consider that. And quite often, the real prophets of God through history were hated and by their own. And we know the Lord Jesus Christ was as well. I, I was taken back. I, I know many of you are familiar with, you know, when we, the times of COVID, and, and, and then we had so many of those riots and all those things that were taking place. And there was so much anarchy being exposed, and there was some real growing hatred and animosity more against Christianity and God. And then some of these uh, walks and riots and parades and things that were taking place, there were some groups of people that were actually having signs and wearing teachers, t-shirts that said, if Jesus returns, we'll kill him again. Just the, the, the hatred. The heart. That is the spirit of Ahab. And I'll tell you, that is the spirit of these that are endeavoring to get the people of God to compromise. And we should be forewarned in these things. I know we need to conclude, and we're going to skip right to the last thing in our conclusion here, or thought. And Christian is, well, we strive to make Ramoth Gilead ours. Look, it was a proper desire for him to have, for Ahab to have it. It was something God had given, given the people of God, the people of Israel. It is a right thing to possess all the things that God spiritually has given us. We, we should possess those things. We should endeavor to walk with God with pure hearts and right hearts in order to have the things that God desires to have as people. It's, it's not in the form of Mercedes Benz. It's not in the form of, uh, of million tri uh, multi-million dollar mansions and things like that. Get us, it is so that we could have a, a life of God, right? We can have peace. We can have joy, the peace that passeth all understanding, right? That your joy may be uh, fulfilled. Uh, life and more abundantly, all these things that God has given us, the things that we can see Him do a great work in our lives, see our family turn to Christ, these things that God has endowed and allowed us to possess in this life, we should go for. It is a good desire. And it was a good desire He had. But He wanted it His way. 
And he wanted it for his purpose, and he wanted it for his own glory. Mark chapter 10, verse 27 says, And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And that is the missing element in most things today, is God. Is God. It is the operating or key word. We need God. Now, as we close, you may be thinking, well, brother, what, what's so big about Ramoth Gilead? What, I mean, what, what's the big deal about it? Why, why, why do we even need to get worried about it? Why, why, should, we even, why should we even care about just this, this place, Ramoth Gilead? Well, the Lord, when He gave an inheritance possession, He gave some across Jordan. And this particular inheritance, one, it was a city of refuge for those that were in need. Those that may have even been in a situation that wasn't entirely their fault. It was a place they could go and be nurtured and cared for and help. It was a place and it was one of the cities that were given to the Levites, the priests of God. It was one that was going to be their inheritance, their place, where they would worship, where they would glorify God and serve. And I'm saying God has given us some things that we need to hang on to, we need to possess, and we need to fight for. And this was in a place that was on the other side of Jordan. It wasn't in the the mainland proper. It was on the outskirts. It was on, on the fringe. It was a, you might even say, a front line of defense. It was needed. And I'd say, Christian, today that's where we're at. Temple Baptist Church is a Ramoth Gilead. It is a place of refuge for each and every one of us. It tells us in Scripture that we're priests and kings of God. It is a place we can come to worship and minister. A place that we can get help. It is a place where we can take a stand for God. It is needed. This place is needed. It is a Ramoth Gilead that needs to be desired and fought for. It needs to be something that we come and gather to. It should be a possession that God has blessed. And through the years, just the history of the men and how they've worked and served in order to carve out something that could be for the blessing of generations to come. Oh, don't let us forsake it. Don't let us walk from God and see it get in disrepair and to uh, be something that we can only dream about, possessing God has given it to us. And we need to stand for it. And we need to desire it. It's been given us to by God. Place of refuge. Place of protection. You know, until the Lord Jesus Christ comes, we'll never truly have the entire possession that He has desired or planned for His people. But this reign with Gilead is Joshua and the men went into that land. It was the earliest of possessions that God carved out, separated out, and said, use this. And just a few centuries later, it was in the hand of the enemy. And I would say all across this country and across this world, too many Ramoth Gileads are no longer in the hands of God's people. They're in the hands of the enemy. God help us to hang on to this. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, help us as a people to stay the course and be true. Lord, help us to hang on to this great spiritual possession that You have given us. Lord, help us to be strong. Help us to be faithful. Lord, please continue to work in our hearts here tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.